what's up YouTube Jeremiah Hersey here and welcome to the next episode in my power app series today we're going to be using what's known as a wizard app a wizard app is a function inside of power apps that allows you to build a application relatively quickly you need to have data in order to use this feature and there's a limited number of data sources that pair with this feature today we're going to be using Google Sheets and we're going to start out there we're going to create a real simple table and then we're going to bring it right inside of Power Apps and it's going to create an app for us really really quickly let's go ahead and get started if you want to go to make.powerapps.com First thing you want to make sure that you're in the correct environment. This is the first thing you should always check when coming to this website. And so you can see here I have my personal environment selected. That's what I want to use. And when I go to the left hand side, you're going to see this option to create. And this is where we're going to start here today. So if you select create, you're going to see this option that says start from. So some of the more common data sources are located right here for this feature. This is what's known as the wizard app. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to be using Google Sheets. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see more data sources that we can use with this wizard application. So if you'll select new connection here, You'll see that there are several sources available. Um, this diamond symbol right here that you see, this means that it is a premium connector. And so you have to have a premium license to use one of these. But we can scroll down and see that Google Sheets is a free connector and that's what we're gonna be using here today. Select to create a blank spreadsheet. So go to Google Sheets, we're gonna select a blank sheet here. And we're just going to build a real simple app here today. So I'm going to build a check-in app. So the first thing that I want to know is the name of the person. The next piece of information is what is the date. And maybe we'll put in here reason for visit. Feel free to put whatever you want here. And so because Google Sheet automatically saves for us, we're already set up, ready to go with this sheet, okay? So what we're gonna do here is inside of Power App, so we're gonna go back to the Power Apps tab, we're gonna select Google Sheets. It's gonna ask us to create a connection to our source. So I'm gonna choose my account. I'm just gonna allow that feature. And we're going to allow access to Google Sheets as well. And we can now see that we have some data sets that we can choose from. The one that we're looking for is that untitled spreadsheet. If we would have changed the name here, it would appear different inside of Power Apps. So I'm going to select the untitled spreadsheet and I'm just going to choose sheet one. Okay, just the first one there and we'll go ahead and connect. Now this is the wizard app working here. It's gonna build a fully functional application for us to use and we can enter in data directly into the sheet. You'll see on the left hand side that we have several different screens. So the first screen is known as the browse screen. So this allows you to see all of the entries of the data with inside of your Google Sheet. The next screen is the detail screen. And then finally, we have an edit screen, which allows us to edit information with inside of the Google Sheet directly from our Power App. So a couple things that I wanna talk about here is some of the more focused features that we need to be aware of. And so in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna notice this box up here in the left-hand corner. Now this is known as the property dropdown box. And what it contains is all of the different properties for each item that you select inside of your Power App. So if I select this label, notice the, the label over here lights up. And this is known as the tree view. Okay, so the tree view allows you to see all of the components 
inside of your power app these items over here on the left hand side so there's multiple ways to do everything inside of power apps it really just depends on what your preference is this plus icon is an insert icon it allows you to insert items into your app you also have that option here at the top of the screen notice the insert option at the top now typically when I use the power apps functionality to insert objects I'm going to use the one at the top but if I need a rectangle specifically I'll use the one on the left because it's pretty quick to grab that item if I need it you also have your database icon we can see here we're connected into Google Sheets and so I'm logged in that's my connection string and it allows me to bring in data you also have some options to upload media images audio files you can incorporate power automate as well that's what this option is here on the left that's power automate workflow you can also put in variables and create collections and we'll go through that a little bit later on in the series and so this allows you to kind of keep everything organized with inside of power apps and then we also have some advanced tools for monitoring what's going on with inside the app as well but one of the most important ones is this tree view because as you select different objects you're going to see that object highlighted in the tree view so you know exactly which item it is and it is nice to be able to rename these as well and so I can say create new check-in so that's and that's going to be a button okay now that text is kind of long so sometimes it's better just to create some abbreviated titles here so I can button and then maybe say add new and so it makes it easily identifiable um, I, that this is the button the add new button and it makes it just uh, a little bit easier to display the information as well it just makes it a little easier to know what the items are inside of your power app and so I might change this gallery here galleries display information similar to what a art gallery does it displays art well a gallery in power apps is going to display data that's what it does and so I could say um, this is my I like to abbreviate here GAL for gallery and then I'll call it something like check-in so I know that this is my check-in gallery I can see all of the check-ins for my application so it's nice to be able to rename these and it's easier to reference them if you know the specific name of what you're going to be using so inside of the property drop down box is the current property of text and this is the text that is displayed with inside of the header right here so you have several options for editing this you can double click on the item itself so you can double click on the item itself and change the name you can also appear in the formula bar so the formula bar is right next to the property drop down box anything wrapped in double quotes is a text string so if I want to change this I have to change what is inside of the double quotes so I can change the name here now as you select the different items there's going to be different properties associated with each item that you select there's going to be different properties for different item types so as I select the different objects you're going to see all the different properties available over here on the left hand side for each item that you select in the property drop down box notice these icons up here at the top are already created for us so there's a plus icon which is going to allow us to enter new information you can see up here in the formula bar that the property that it's set on is the on select property so that means when someone selects this item inside the app what is going to happen it's going to create a new form and it's going to navigate to edit screen one so that's what the property does if you hold down the alt key on your keyboard and select an item you can 
and play it as if it were live. So notice now in the tree view over here on the left hand side, the edit screen one is selected. And so we're on this screen and we see our name, date, and our reason for visit. Now one of the common issues that you might find when using SharePoint, Excel, Google Sheets is that spaces are represented with this underscore x0020 underscore. So the awesome part about Power Apps is we don't have to leave it this way. So this is known as a form. And so in this form, all of these cards, so these are known as cards, have different columns with inside of it directly from our Google Sheet. And so what you can do is you can unlock the card. Okay, so I'm gonna select the card. Notice that it highlights the whole thing. I can either right click and choose to unlock or I can also use the advance option in the property pane over here on the right hand side you can select advanced here at the top and you can unlock to change the properties of this box okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to right click choose unlock and now i can double click on the name notice the text here at the top says parent dot display name so the the parent is where whatever this card is living in which is the form and so it's just coming directly from our google sheet but remember double quotes allow us to put in text and so i'm going to put a double quote let me zoom in here for you and i'm going to type in reason for visit in the double quote and notice that now inside the app we have nice text easy to read without the extra pieces inside of their accounting for the spaces from the transfer but if you look in the upper right hand corner you're going to notice a play icon and so we're going to use this to play our app and actually insert some data so i'm going to hit play to make it a little easier to type so we didn't specify a date here <clears throat> or a date type so I'm just going to use basic text in this case. And so I'm going to use, I'm going to use six slash 22, 23, type in the name. Uh, let's say broken arm. All right. So we're going to go ahead and click the check mark. And because we're playing the app, we do not have to hold down the alt key and I'll go ahead and click the check mark and submit this entry. Notice I now navigate. I'm going to click the X in the upper right hand corner. You can also hit escape as well to get out of play mode. And notice that it has brought us back to browse screen one. And so this is a really easy way to create an app relatively quickly. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.